Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to this Red Gaming Tech video. My name is Amata and I hope you're having an amazing day. Apologies for sounding a bit hoarse, I am still under the weather, but we are going to launch straight into today's video. It is far, far from a secret at this point that for anyone trying to get hold of a GPU or a next gen console over the last year and a half, well, it's been less than optimal. It's fair to describe the current situation with graphics card stock and the cost stock for the next gen consoles as a bit of a hellscape as obviously supply is extremely limited and scalpers are not making things any better either. And there's been few signs that we're going to see things ease anytime soon. However, NVIDIA CEO Jensen Huang recently made some comments during an interview with Yahoo Finance where they discussed amongst other things their recent GTC tech showcase. And unfortunately, Jensen said, quote, I think that through the next year, demand is going to far exceed supply. We don't have any magic bullets in navigating the supply chain. And this does fall in line with recent comments from the Intel CEO, Pat Gelsinger, who said, quote, we're in the worst of it now. Every quarter next year, we'll get incremental better but they're not going to have supply demand balance until 2023 however with all that in mind we are still going to see improvements get better in 2022 you know even if we don't return to normal in 2022 it's not like we're going to still be in this bad of a situation when it comes to GPU and console stock all throughout next year. We are slowly going to see things ease as we go through next year. Um, primarily, one of the things that's obviously going to contribute to this is Ethereum shifting towards proof of stake and away from GPU-based proof of work. And that will definitely help, but obviously these issues are caused by more than just mining. There's you know the actual production itself. There's been cases where certain companies just haven't had the actual parts to make these devices so obviously it's not just going to be you know you click your fingers and everything's well again but we are going to see some slow improvement but just don't things expect to just don't expect things excuse me to return to normal for quite some time unfortunately however thankfully we do actually have some positive news to move on to now as we have a very interesting and mysterious tweet from a momo over on twitter and it just says fish q3 and then t-rex q3 and to translate this a little bit in the fish is intel fishhawk the h-e-d-d -D variant of sapphire rapids according to videocards.com and then you probably guessed the bottom one in that it's raptor lake which is the generation which will follow older lake and according to 3dcenter.org we are still going to be seeing raptor lake take place on the lga 1700 chipset and up to 8c plus 16c slash 32 threads and I will say this aligns up with our information what Paul said previously that in Q3 Q4 we will see a release for this and it will be shortly before the release of Intel Arc which will release to compete with both AMD and of course Nvidia now, by all accounts, Raptor Lake is going to be very, very interesting. Obviously, Alder Lake, we finally saw Intel be competitive once again against AMD, and they're obviously not going to just relax and be like, okay, we're done now, lads. Obviously, they want to continue just biting AMD's heels and regaining that top spot once again after a long time of AMD just being in the lead in terms of price versus performance and Ryzen just being on an absolute tear. By all accounts, Raptor Lake is going to be impressive, but it's Meteor Lake that's going to be the real one to watch. And of course, when it comes to Intel, arc well we've said many many times now how excited we are to see what intel has to offer when it comes to discrete graphics and i personally really look forward to seeing how exactly intel arc will fare against both amd and nvidia especially considering that both rdna3 and rtx40 in all the recent leaks and rumors are sounding very very monstrous obviously that's on the tippy top but still i think next year q3 q4 is it's not going to be boring let's just put it that way but what's also interesting to me is this Fishhawk, the HEDT variant of Sapphire Rapids. And obviously, when it comes to HEDT, AMD have been pretty much winning there for some time now with Threadripper. And it just shows that Intel are very keen to challenge them in this market space as well. Obviously, whether or not they're able to, we'll have to see. But we do actually have some information on Sapphire Rapids itself. Because again, Fishhawk is allegedly the HEDT variant of Sapphire Rapids. And there has been some leaks about the uh, Sapphire Rapids Xeon 
Now thankfully we do not need our salt shakers for this one. This is actually officially from the mouths of Intel. And obviously Intel already revealed quite some time ago now that they will be launching two Xeons based on the Sapphire Rapids architecture, one with and one without HBM2 memory. And today at Supercomputing 2021, Intel did confirm that the HBM2E memory variant will feature four, I repeat, four stacks of HBM2E memory, each with 16 gigs of capacity, which obviously means in total we will see 64 gigs of memory on this particular SKU. Now Intel also boasted that we are going to be seeing a 32% increase across workloads that matter quote unquote and you can see the slide that they provided on screen now which gives you a bit of a better look at exactly what they're talking about with these new Xeons. Thankfully though that isn't all they had to say they were talking about once again Ponte Vecchio which is a name that should be very familiar to you all it is a HPC GPU which is of course a data center accelerator this is not something for you or I it will be used alongside Side these Xeon Sapphire Rapids in a supercomputer such as Aurora and there's going to be various other supercomputers that use it as well but Aurora is definitely a name that we've heard before and they did also confirm that we will see L1 and L2 cache configurations of Ponte Vico HPC and we're going to be seeing 4 megs of L1 cache and 144 megs of L2 cache per tile in Ponte Vico and that means we will see a total of 408 megs of L2 cache now finally they did also provide a bit of a roadmap but unfortunately it's very very light on the information as you can see for yourself on screen it doesn't really tell us a whole lot other than what I just said but they are already of course planning ahead to 2023 but again it's very very light on the information and personally I would have rather they just didn't release this rather than just releasing it with barely any information but hey what do I know. Anyway guys, that is me done for this video. Thank you so much for watching. Do remember to like and subscribe if you haven't done so already. It does have a great deal. And I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.